deck or more of a mid-range deck. I don't know either. I mean, it's, yeah. So here we go. He's going to tip his hand right away. He'll play a Sliver Hive. <laughs> Sliver Hive, a uh, really interesting card from the new set. Um, taps for any color as long as you're casting Slivers. Um, basically like a Cavernous Souls for Slivers, except they, can't, they can be countered. And then um, uh, it actually has another ability where you can actually put Slivers into play, I believe. Yeah, as long as you control one. As long as you control yeah, one Sliver. Yeah, you pay mana and activate it, and you can put a Sliver into play. So uh, it's a pretty sweet card. Here's a Mutavault. Now that's the big question, right? Can you play Mutavault and Sliver Hive Lord side by side? There's only one Mutavault in Roy's deck, so he feels a very certain way about this. He's going to play a Mana with Sliver, and it looks like he may be attacking or is he going to be adding mana? He's actually going to be attacking here, so very easily could have... Actually, no, he can't play... He can't do it just yet next turn if he does have Sliver Hive Lord because of Mutavault, so yeah. that's kind of the problem. Here's I mean, Binder, Mutavault does count as a Sliver, so it's interesting, but um, yeah, I'm with you because you can't actually cast the Sliver Hive Lord. It makes it very difficult. Cloud from Raptor's going to evolve until 1 2. You saw the Tide Mage come down to tap the Mana West Sliver. And Miriam is going to hang out on defense, no interest in attacking. So Reese draws a card. It's a copy of Garrick Caller of Beasts. A little ways away from casting that one. There's a Yavimaya Coast. Those not, pain lands. He, he does have a. Uh, it looks like he has an Elvish Mystic in his hand, so he's not that far away anymore, to be honest. Yeah. He could technically, next turn, um, cast Garrick, which would be pretty interesting. The pain lines are really, really good for this deck, I think. Oh, yeah. Because he's basically a five color deck. Got to pay one to put the Elvis Mystic into play and pass the turn back. See Case of Coleos in the hand, Hollow Fountain as well. The tough thing with Slivers, because I, presumably you're going to have to be five colors because Hive Lord is so powerful, is just figure out the right mana base. There are a lot of twos and ones all over the place here. Yeah. Four Sliver Hives and four Mana Confluence are easy. The rest is probably pretty difficult. I I'm with you, though. This could be a real deck. The thing is, though, finding the right configuration because there's just so many different choices that you have to make. Yeah. Even something as simple as do I play Mutavolt or not? I think one is reasonable, but uh, unfortunately for Roy, he just happened to draw it, so it might impact his mana. We'll see. Yeah, this is... It, it's weird that the Tribal deck can't play four copies of Mutavolt, but I, I don't think this deck can. Yeah, yeah. It, as good as Mutavolt is, and obviously we've seen over the past year, it's incredible as Miriam does play one. He's going to play a Thassa now as well, but I don't think it can play a bunch of them, let alone maybe even the one that Reese has in play. There's a Silver Hive Lord. That was the draw this turn. So let's see what he decides to do here. There's a Caves. So it looks like he's going to start taking some damage to cast some spells here. Two, three. Yeah, it's time to drop that bad boy into play, I think. Actually, it looks like he's going to go with Garrick. Yeah, so he's yeah. going to start there. I guess he could just minus Garrick and put the Hive Lord into play if he wants to. It looks like the elevator's going to go up, so take a look at the top five cards. Two, three, four, and five. There's a Gale Rider. I believe there's also a Leeching. Yeah, yeah, we're so going to we're gonna te test our knowledge on Slivers right now. Ross doesn't know what that one does. So he got three Slivers. Yeah. <laughs> I believe one's a Pump, one's a Lifelink, and the other's a Flyer. Uh, and I, yeah, it looks like Roy just has two lands in his hand, so I don't think he has the... Uh, Queen just yet. Um, but he does have, you know, gets three slivers here. Um, going to be able to start pumping up his creatures pretty soon. Um, but is it going to be enough? I mean, Ross does have that ma uh, um, Thassa in play now. Um, is he going to be able to start pounding through? Thassa could potentially kill Garrick this turn if he's able to get one more devotion for blue, which he does. Yep, there's Judge's Man to provide it. Oh, and he, draws a, he has a Nykthos as well. There's a Master. This Oof. is a pretty good draw. Very good turn there for Ross. Um, has a huge army in play. Roy just, even though he was able to get three slivers, I don't know if he's going to have really enough mana to kind of do everything he wants to do next turn, especially because he's going to lose the Garrick this turn um, and take four damage on top of that. Yeah, a bunch of creatures are coming into the red zone now. Or it looks like he might be, yeah, so he's going to kill the Garrick. I think you have to, yeah. right? And then uh, Ross is going to generate a bunch of um, illusion tokens here. Or elemental tokens, rather. So pretty good turn there for Ross, despite the fact that Roy was able to get a Garrick into play last turn. Um, not sure how much Roy's going to be able to do this turn. Yeah, Diffusion Sliver, I believe, was the draw. It's just like he's a little too oh, slow out of the gate. I don't think Manu Sliver actually untaps. I mean, yeah, I believe that that's... Yeah, that'll stay tapped because of the Tidebinder Mage. Yeah. But um, so he has access to basically six mana currently. He has a land, another land in his hand, so seven mana. Um, let's see what he decides to do here. 
just so far behind here. And this is this is this is the mono blue draw, right? Yeah. One, two, three Astasa, Force Master of Ways. I mean, it just curved out beautifully. Yeah. Even Nykthos came down too. Ross can actually give three of his creatures unblockable neck make him unblockable next turn with Nykthos. So uh, Thassa can come through. Yeah, so you can attack for nine again. Yeah, Royce is basically on a two-turn clock. And that's if he is able to deal with all those elementals. Mm -hmm. Looks like Holofont might come into play untapped here. Yeah, so Reese is going to go down to 12. He's got to get some threats out here right away. No time to mess around now. There's another Slipper Hive over in the hand. Yeah, in, in this particular game, it just looks like the, the blue deck is just, its tempo strategy was just too much for Slivers right now. Um, but again, let's see if he can turn this around. There's another Gale Rider, two. Gale Rider's going to add some mana here. Gale Rider and Mystic. And, and there's another, yeah, and there's, another there's Sliver. Si that one's Siphon Sliver. This is testing our knowledge of the Sliver Ridge. <laughs> That's what this is. So Ross is going to untap here. Still in really good shape. Let's see what he draws. It looks like he's going to scry that card to the bottom. Draw a card for the turn. Doesn't really need anything else, to be honest. No, he's got all he needs. Yeah. The only thing I think, the only thing I actually think he would want now is just mana. Yeah. To be able to continue to make more creatures unblockable. Yeah, there is the Siphon Sliver. Silver creatures you control do have lifelink. They're not very big right now, unfortunately. I actually think this is probably, so he's going to be able to do, Mutavolt gets plus one, plus one. So that's 10 right there. If he can do one more. I promise he can do one. Yeah, more. so even with the life link, I'm trying. Yeah, I think if he just attacks with everything, it should be enough. Yeah. I am pretty sure he can do one more. Roy's going to take a look at his hand and consult things. He's going to look at Diffusion Sliver and a Sliver Hive Lord. Wasn't able to get the 5 5 into play that makes everything indestructible. That's when the deck gets really tough, and he's going to scoop it up. So Ross Merriam is going to win game number one here over Roy Reese. Mono Blue Devotion up a game over Slivers based off of what is basically. The perfect mono blue draw. One, two, three Astas, the four is Master of Ways. Yeah, and not only is it Master of Ways, but it's Master of Ways off of Nykthos. So yeah. he actually cast two spells that turn. So really good start for Ross. Um, after board, I mean, Ross has got to be thinking, all right, he's a sliver deck. He's probably not as good. At, he's not an aggressive deck, or he's not as aggressive as I can be. He's not as gonna, he's not going to be able to out-tempo me, probably. The only way he's probably going to beat me is if he was, is able to jump the curve with his mana creatures. So... Um, kind of think, you know, doesn't have to do that much. I mean, domestication could be good. Um, Domestication's got to be good. It's, it's, it, domestication is probably coming in. Um, maybe Gainsay as a way to counter, you know, the Queen, perhaps? Maybe but counter the just Hive Lord, yeah. Just, uh, the Hive Lord, so I, I'm just not sure it's good enough. Um, I, yeah, I think he's just going to bring in domestications. I don't think he really needs to bother with anything else. On the other side of things, there's three Golgari Charms, a Diffusion Sliver, two Siphon Slivers, a Belligerent Sliver, two Banishing Lights, two copies of Zenigos, the Reveler, an Elspeth Sun's Champion, a Chase Memory Adept, and two copies of the Liana Vest. Uh, the thing about a five-color deck is that you have options aplenty about what you can do. Well, it's he's got some... Golgari Charm is interesting, because I think it's a card that he wants against Mono Blue Devotion, but doesn't it kill most of his creatures That's the same thing well? I was thinking, right? <laughs> it's good against him. Yeah. I mean, you know, the, the problem here is, I guess... The charm is only pretty good if he has a predatory sliver in play to make his creatures bigger. Yeah. Um, it can still be fine. I think, I think because Master Waves is so good, you're just going to want the charms. Um, the Fusion Sliver is not great in this matchup because not, Ross isn't going to be targeting your stuff. Like, I guess you might be a little bit scared of a card like Domestication or Rapid mm -hmm. Hybridization. So maybe you just want the two in the main deck. I'm not sure if you want the third one. Uh, Siphon Sliver is fine. Banishing Light's good. That's got to come in, right? Yeah. I can't imagine that doesn't come in. And then there's, you know, these cards that are kind of at random that aren't slivers. Xenagos the Reveler times two, Elspeth, Jace, Liana Vess. Uh, I mean, may maybe. I mean, I think Elspeth comes in just because it's still really good against Mono Blue if you get it to resolve. Okay. And you can ramp to it as well. So I, I, I kind of like the Elspeth. Xenagos, I mean, 
I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't think Zedigos is particularly that great against a tempo-based deck, but Elspeth I can see just being just because it's so dominant once it comes into play. There's a chance that Belligerent Silver could come into play. It's basically the two-headed, uh, two-headed Silver. Silver creatures you control have this creature can't be blocked except by two or more creatures. Maybe that comes in. Maybe not. Yeah, I, I, for th this this is a strange matchup, mostly because there's his creature base is basically worse than Ross's, mm -hmm. but he can't be more aggressive than Ross because Ross is just Ross's deck is just too streamlined and too low to the curve. So it's I, I think the only way he can really beat Ross is if he j is able to jump the curve by ramping. Um, you know, mana west lever helps obviously. Um, being able to cord a, a, a Hive Lord into play somehow, um, that's good as well. But yeah, in general, I, I don't see him winning this unless he's able to jump the curve and get like a big bomb into play, um, like Elspeth. Because we even saw we saw him get a Garrick into play and it just didn't matter. That's you true. Know? That's true. So, yeah, plus, it got some cards, didn't matter. Got Yeah, got three cards, just didn't matter. Um, Ross's deck is just too well positioned against that type of strategy because he just curves out its tempo. You know, you're not going to be able to beat a tempo deck like that. Yeah. Well, we'll see what changes here in game number two. I, you know, Slivers, I think, is something that people are going to work on. I think it, I actually wouldn't be surprised, you know, if you see the best teams in the world to dedicate some time to this deck. There's some powerful things going on here. Yeah, I Find mean... Finding the right config is tough, though. I think finding the right configuration is hard, but, you know, Sliver Hive is a great land. Um, Quarter Calling certainly helps this deck, I think, a lot as well. Um, being able to search out the Sliver Hive Lord is huge. And um, you're right. I mean, there's a, I just think this, this deck has potential to be good. It's just going to take a, a long time to figure out what the right configuration is. Like, you're going to have to put the work in to test it. Like, you, yeah. can't, you can't use your intuition. There are some decks that you can kind of intuit in terms of how to build. This is not one of those decks. Yeah. There's just too many different cards you have to figure out. Is this Sliver even good? Do I just jam all these slivers because they're slivers, or do I have to, like? There's some slivers in here that might just not be good enough as silver bullets, you yeah. know. Um, maybe you go for a more streamlined approach and use use your cords really just to get you know the hive lord or something like that, you know. Yeah, a card like Collision Sliver is it the meta game? Is the meta game appropriate where I need my slivers to basically be unblockable? Yeah, do you need that? It's just especially if you, if they're indestructible, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah. You don't need them to do everything, especially if you already have a fly, a, guy, a sliver that makes them flying. So, um, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see whether or not this deck can evolve into a tier one deck. Um, I feel like it has some advantages over a traditional creature deck just because the Hive Lord gives them indestructibility, so it's good against Supreme Verdict, where other, you know, um, creature deck, like elves or goblins, those decks are more vulnerable to Supreme Verdicts, you know. This is a tribal deck that can actually do pretty well against Supreme Verdict because of Court of Calling and, and Hive Lord. It definitely has some interesting, you know, dynamics and cards in it. You know, a card like Thorncaster Sliver, whenever this creature attacks, it deals one damage to target creature or player, you know, that's a five mana spell. I mean, it's a cool card, but, you know, is it, is it the appropriate card? There's only one in Reese's deck. And again, I know what he's thinking. He's like, oh, well, it's a silver bullet. I have quarter calling. But do you really need that silver bullet? Like, yeah. can you really think of a lot of times where you're going to be searching that card out over just the high bullet? Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah, one-ups, you're going to have some polarized draws. Yep. And he seemed taking a mulligan right now. You know, you don't know if it was the mana was wrong, if the slivers came up wrong. Because the mana is obviously all over the place, too. He's a five-color deck. Because you take a look at a mana base, there's four silver highs, four mana confluence, and everything else, twos and ones, outside of three breeding pools. Yeah, so you have to start wondering... Is this the right configuration? You're, you're dealing with a five-color deck. There's a million different cards that you can play because you have access to, like, basically everything. Um, what spells do I play? What's the right combination of slivers? What's the, what bullets do I care about? Um, let alone the sideboard, you know? Yeah, that's, that's the real hard that's part. That's the real hard part. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm definitely interested to see whether or not slivers evolve into a Tier 1 deck, especially at the Pro Tour. Because I'm with you, I definitely, I would not be surprised to see some Japanese player sh top eight a pro throw with slivers. Yeah, yeah <laughs> for sure. And it would be a build that you did not see coming. I, yeah. Either, that, I that's for sure. <laughs> There's no way you're going to see that build coming. Yeah. You know, they probably have like a, man, they, a small sliver engine, like Mano and Sliver, and you know, to get Sliver Hive Lord in play. And it's just, actually, I just want to fight an indestructible creature. Yeah. That's all I wanted. The Japanese you know? always manage to find the right card to make a deck go from tier two to tier one like they're the, the i believe a japanese player was the uh, was the per first person to p kind of put pack rat into mono black devotion they top eight yeah 
I mean, obviously, it evolved into a, a, a different kind of deck, but um, they saw it first, you know? Mahara's Green Devotion deck? My heart, yeah, same thing. Mahara's Green Devotion deck basically laid out the framework for the decks that we're seeing today. Yeah. Looks like Reese is going to take a mulligan down to five here. This is part of the issue with Slivers, I think, at least this build of it. And, of course, we're in week one, so I don't expect it to be a perfect build at this point. You know, again, there's twos and ones and, you know, a couple fours of the necessary cards and the mana base all over the place. This deck is, I imagine that Roy's going to take a, quite a few mulligans over the course of the day because, you know, things aren't going to line up correctly always. Yeah, and if you're mono blue, you, you'd probably, you're probably salivating when you're playing against a deck like this because um, you cannot afford to stumble against a deck like Mono Blue Devotion. They're mm -hmm. too streamlined. Um, they, their curve is just too aggressive. And whenever you're playing a deck like this with a lot of silver bullets, you can just get these really awkward draws that you just can't afford against a deck like Mono Blue Devotion. Yep. Because there's really, there's really not even a card that can kind of put you back into the game if you're really far behind, you know? There's not really like a catch-up card. No, that's what we saw in the last game, right? Yeah. Once Master Royce came down and made, you know, six elemental tokens, I take I took a look at Royce Decklist and I'm like, all right, does he have a way out of this? And the answer is just a resounding no. Yeah, it's not like he could even like top deck an Elspeth or something. Like there's if you look at some of the decks in the format, it's like, all right, well, if they topped up Supreme Verdict, they're right back into it. Okay, if he top decks like a pack right here, it's awesome for him, you know? Uh, if he top decks uh, quarter calling or if he top decks Paul Kronos or something, he can be right back into it. There's really not a deck card in Roy's deck that can kind of help him come back, come from behind. It's more of all like pressing my advantage. Mm -hmm. I imagine once he gets the ball rolling, he's doing pretty well. But he has to be able to get the ball rolling. You yeah. see his hand right now. There's a sliver hive, I uh -oh. believe, and then no other lands. He does not look happy. It's a good read. <laughs> it's a good read by you. I'm really good at reading people. Yeah. I'm going to say he doesn't look happy with this hand. I think Ross feels right now. Fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> Ross is just looking at his seven awesome cards. It looks like Reese is going to take another mulligan down to four cards. Probably feels a little bit better now. Maybe. Maybe, yeah. I, I think the matchup is pretty good for Ross. Well, the most difficult thing for Ross, I think, right now is to try to control his smiling. Okay. Because he doesn't want to smile too much. You want to be somewhat sympathetic in situations like this. Ah. But, uh, yeah, Ross is obviously very, very happy right now. I bet he has the nuts, too. Yeah, I mean, Ross is one of those players that's still in contention for the Players' Championship, oh, too. Oh, he, he's right in it. He's live. I mean, yeah. we were looking at the, the standings at the beginning of the day, and he's basically, you know, he wasn't the, one of the people we were talking about because he was basically at the bottom of the page, but everyone on that page is live. Yes, oh, um, absolutely. Joe, especially because Joe Lissette isn't here, and I think West Coast players probably don't have as much of an advantage as East Coast players because there's probably more East Coast events By at, large, the, yeah. towards the end here. Yeah. Um, not in total, but towards the end specifically. Yeah. I mean, if you're on the East Coast, I think you're, you're more incentivized to try to go to more events, as, as many events as possible. Um, so, yeah, Ross is definitely one of the people still in, along with Fabiano, along with Eric Rill. And those players that you mentioned, Fabiano, Rill, Burton, Sini, uh, they're Ross, all here. They're all here. Yeah, Burton and and is all, probably the closest. They're all doing well. Yeah. Too. They're off to good starts. And of course, we're only, four, you know, we're in our fourth round right now. A lot of tournament left to be played, but they're all off to good starts here. Ross and Fabiano sitting at three now. Uh oh, we have a Boswell sighting in the background there. Oh, the Bos. The sleepless Bos. So That's, who else could it be? For anyone at home, if your if your girlfriend is watching the stream with you, I would send her out of the room. Yep. You don't want to you don't want to see the gun show. A Temple Garden to start things off. Miriam's going to play an island, kick it back over. Reese draws a sliver, it's not a land. Miriam, an island, see if he's got a two drop to play. He does have a one, excuse me, a Raptor for passing the turn back. Reese draws a card, it's a copy of Manic Influence. He does have four different cards in his hand, so that's one of the four different colored cards. That's one of the best draws. <laughs> There's a predatory sliver. I got my sliver game down now. Now, yeah, now you know. It's yeah. good to go. For those of you who, who couldn't see at home, uh, Cedric was actually studying up on slivers uh, while we were off camera right Have now. Have to get ready. Got to get ready. Frost from where it's going to evolve both of those Cloudfin Raptors. In for one comes the first one. Reese is going to go down to 18. Takes a draw. Didn't get a great look at it. It was a Jace. Jace memory yeah, adept. Yep. Here's a Gale Rider sliver. All right here. So he's got two, two, two flyers in play. I think he'd probably just hold back. I'm not sure if there's a really good attacker. I think he has to play defensively to kind of undo the mulligan, right? Yeah. Unfortunately, if Ross has any other two power creature in his hand or greater those cloud from raptors are going to be coming in no matter what yeah. so yeah roy's in a tough spot here it looks like he is just going to attack maybe we'll take two try again 
Nope. Ross, you should know what Grow Arsenal Come on. is. You won a tournament with that card in your deck. <laughs> Embarrassing. So Ross jumps yeah, he in there. Knows. He knows. Yeah, if this is if this is master right here, I have to imagine Ross just locks his game up. Yeah. If this this I don't think Roy even has an answer short of vanishing light. Yep. There's master. I feel like every time I watch Mono Blue, I'm just like, man, if they have master on turn four, the opponent can't win. Yeah. I feel like that's what we always say. It's like if they have Thas on turn three or master on turn four, they can't win. Unless the opponent has like a hollow foul and a temple of enlightenment yeah. and a water grave in yep. play, then it's like ah, big deal. Yeah, that, yeah, yeah, that's going to do it. Ross Merriam's going to win this match over Roy Reese. Two games to zero. Roy did take a mulligan down to four that game. But by and large, Mono Blue Devotion, I think, actually probably has a pretty good matchup against Slivers. I, I think Mono Blue Devotion has basically a really good matchup against anything that doesn't have Supreme Verdict in it. Yeah. Um,